Okay. I'm just starting from where I left off in uh, my last video. I'll put that up there or there or something. If you're interested in uh, this sort of thing. I'm going to do a quick oil change right now. And this shifter I changed in the last video. Well, I put it on too low. I can't really get my foot underneath it to upshift. And if you watch my last video, you'll see, uh, I think I misshifted about three or four times because I couldn't get my foot under there quick enough. And while I have the shifter off, it kind of, it gives me way better access to the drain plug for changing the oil. So might as well do that. It's with these things, it's pretty easy to change the oil. So there's not really any reason not to do it often. It only takes like a liter of oil, if I remember correctly. Uh, no oil filter, nothing like that. So anyways, let's get to it. First things first, 10 millimeter. Um, when I changed this shifter, I used one off of my uh, kind of a parts bike, but the parts bike is pretty much full still so I will probably be putting the old shifter back on after I order a new spring for the other one so this what I'm saying is this is probably just a temporary shifter and this one seems to be bent in a bit too much too maybe I'll throw it in the vise and pull it out a bit just try to bend it slightly out Okay, you can see that's the drain plug right there. It should be a 24 millimeter. Uh, if you don't have that, I think 15 sixteenths will work as well. Now, if you were to look at this oil on the dipstick, it looks clean, but it's going to come out of here and it probably won't look clean. And there's a there's a couple different theories for this. Uh, I think with me, if, if you're going to try to do this, you want to do it fast. If you want to do a quick oil change, it's probably better to have the motor warm. That way it'll, it'll run out faster because it's thinner. However, there is also another theory. If you have lots of time, the oil's thicker, but the oil is not all up inside the motor right now. It's had time to sit because it has not been run. So, yeah, two ways of looking at it. Now that was tighter than it should have been. This is a aluminum plug. You don't need it. Don't need it to be reefed to 200 foot pounds. Now in here there should be, oh, I, I think there's a spring or there's a, a mesh. Yeah, there's a spring, definitely. Yes, and a mesh, uh, uh, I guess that would be considered your oil filter, that little mesh thing. Okay, so now, since I have all the time in the world, I can just let this drain for a while. Now, obviously, the uh, longer you let it drain, the better. Get as much of the old crap as you can out. So in the last last video of this 
Um, it seemed to be running pretty good, but I think the gas in it is a year old. So <laughs> it probably could be running better. Now what I'm wondering is, see I have this, I have this alcohol in the fridge. It's been in there forever. It's called Absence. And it... <coughs> Benjamin, that's enough. It tastes uh, much like you would think paint thinner or turpentine would taste. It's terrible. Now what if I took that Absence and maybe, maybe mix it with some manure? Put some manure in the bottle, shake her up, and <clears throat> dump her in. You might have heard the saying, Absence makes the fart go Honda? That's terrible. Anyways, let's get back to this. So I cleaned up this because, well, this is a 42-year-old bike and it's going to have one clean part on it. And it just goes like that. And theoretically, you just kind of stick her back in and... Now, as far as uh, what kind of oil to put in it, well, I have no idea. What I use is whatever I have and my theory behind that is clean oil is better than dirty oil no matter what it is as long as it's motor oil you just want that tight enough that it's not going to back out on you and you just keep an eye on it for a few days and you'll it's it'll be fine Okay, now, to put that shifter back on, yeah, maybe I'll take it in and just bend it out a tiny bit. Okay, you can see the definite bend the shifter has in it. So it goes on like that. Well, this is bent way in. So I'm gonna see if I can straighten it without breaking it. I'm just gonna stick it in the vise and give it a pull. Okay, see, much straighter. Once again, not extremely tight. You don't want to wreck anything. Okay, put some oil in it and uh, we're done. Okay, that little oil checky thing is right here. And I'm hoping my funnel fits in there. Clean funnel, and it, it kind of fits. Now you can see by this oil, I've had this thing around for, I don't know, long time. So, I'm just using what I have. I guess if I was to recommend anything, it would probably be, I don't know, maybe, uh, Maybe that uh, T6, uh, Rotella T6 synthetic. Okay, that wasn't good. Eh, let's just go with the whole thing. Eh, maybe not. Eh, uh, maybe. Okay, not quite the whole thing. Let's see where that takes me to. I want to hold the bike up straight, more or less, when you do this. And it's... Not quite halfway up the hash marks, so I'll put the rest of this in there. Let's see where that takes me to. 
Yeah, it's about three quarters of the way up the hash mark, so screwed in, it will be right to the top of the hash mark. Or the oil fill line, as some people know it. Done. Simplest oil change in the world. Now, I guess I'm going to have to take it for a short ride and see how that shifter works out. See if I can actually get my big feet underneath it now. Okay. So change your oil often. Your bike won't end up in the junkyard at an early age. This one's 42, still runs fine. And it's so easy and cheap. One liter of oil, not even 10 minutes of time. Okay, it's pretty early in the morning, but I think I'm gonna take it for a ride anyways, just to make sure it's all good. Oh. Yeah. Need proper riding clothes. Okay, that's better. Shifting fine now.
Okay, so that's it for the XR200. It's running great. Uh, it's all ready to rip. So, what I'm doing now is I'm getting ready to load the trailer and we're going to go on a trip into the wilderness. Real wilderness. Not like you see <laughs> some of those, uh, those YouTube videos. You'll see the guy goes camping with a... Uh, with a butter knife and a piece of string and he goes out into the bushes and builds something uh, well I don't know how many of them I've watched and you you pay close attention you can hear dogs barking in the background you can hear vehicles going up and down some major highway so that yeah that's not wilderness where I'm going is wilderness there's dangerous stuff there there's grizzlies, there's cougars, there's wolves. And, yeah, I'm even scared. But not scared of the grizzlies and the cougars and the wolves. I'm scared of the mosquitoes. They're going to be horrendous. So, <laughs> if you want to see what I'm talking about, uh, the next few videos will probably be up in the wilderness. Uh, quadding, fishing, everything else. We have a uh, a place up there that's way off grid. Thanks for watching.